Hey, Jeff. Hey, Eric. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing well, thank you, Jeff. There's a lot of dark clouds out there. Yes. There's a lot of uh, tough news out there. Yeah. A lot of negativity. A lot, of, a lot of, of just like heaviness. Dark clouds. Yeah. But um, every once in a while, something, you know, the, the clouds separate and the it's a lot of cloud talk and the, the light just shines through, right? Yeah. It's a little sunshine in your life. This is really, you're doubling down on this cloud thing. Jeff, mm-hmm. tell the people why why life got a little a little better today. I ordered an NES Nintendo system, the original, with 30 preloaded games on it, and it came in the middle of us doing interviews, and we delayed <laughs> the third interview of the day so that we could play some Mario, and we're on level five right now. Five one. That's right. Super Mario Brothers 1. Yep. Killing it killing it so far like we might start a twitch jeff was like yo what if we don't do podcasts anymore we just we just, just play this. video games i don't care <laughs> like it's cool to check in on people and make sure that they're good yeah yeah yeah. it's cool to you know share people's experiences and or whatever you know make people's <laughs> lives better you know we we keep getting all these messages from people i got one from a girl um Sheeta, down in delaware today there was someone um, from australia someone from london new mexico uh, yeah all, all across the united states yeah so you know we keep getting all these messages from people who who appreciate what we're doing yeah but what really I fills am, your heart jeff i would give all of that up to play more super <laughs> mario i don't even i I, I could do this for another eight months. <laughs> I don't I don't have like a real timeline on this. Yeah, this this is this is good so far. Yeah, like keep the windows drawn. I just <laughs> honestly, I'm just gonna wait this out. This is this is my bunker. This all this, I need is Super NES. Maybe or no, that, I need I need NES. I if I could oh, get the Super NES. Wait a second. Yeah. yeah, Jeff got a little greedy today. <laughs> Jeff walks in. He goes, "Look what I found," and it was an unused gift card. And Jeff was like, "Maybe." I swear to God, Jeff goes, maybe I'll get a Sega Genesis too. Yeah. So, well, the Sega has 40 (laughs) games on it. Imagine that we could play 70 games. Yo, to see things turn and, you know, the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. (laughs) Who cares about our podcast anymore? Jeff, who's on the podcast today? On the podcast today is Linkin Park's own Mike Shinoda. Mike Shinoda out there in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, it doesn't need much of an intro. No. I feel like it's Grammy Award winning, uh, famed musician for the last 20 years. Like, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. We we called to check in. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Uh, uh, We called to check in with him, see how everything's going on the West Coast. And then we continued in Los Los Angeles. Yep, to Guap Dad 4000. Guap Dad who had a uh I mean he he might have covid. Yeah, he he went to the emergency room yesterday. We talked to him about how it all went down, what's going on, how he's feeling today and uh and then we finished further up the west coast. We went up to Seattle and we talked to our friend Travis Thompson. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Travis whose uh city was a hot spot for uh covid-19. Now it's like New York has overtaken it, but yeah, like uh, they've been living with it over there for the past like month. Yeah, and, and so um, in 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 a, in a very serious nature. And so we talked to him about all of that and see what he's been up to and how he's uh, surviving through all of this craziness. And uh, Jeff, first, let's call Mike Shinoda. What's happening? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> how, are, how are you? Uh, we're we're hanging in there. You know, there's been uh, up days and and down days and. Up moments and, and down moments. Yeah, we haven't broken out like our hoverboard yet. No, but, but <laughs> I feel like we've got another four months where we can get into that. We have we have discussed it for the record. Like yeah. Jeff was like, "Yo, maybe we can move all this shelving and take down photos and just use this hallway to hoverboard back and forth." And also, Jeff was like, "What if we ordered tennis balls and learned how to juggle?" So, do I? You know those videos on like whether it's like TikTok or Instagram of the people who've set up the Rube Goldberg machines yeah. all over their house. It's like a frat house where they've like run a ping pong and it takes the ping pong ball like 45 minutes to get to its destination. And then it like knocks down like a cup and you're, you're like, I just watched that. I, that. That's the type of thing where like in the beginning of the whole quarantine thing, I'm like, that's so ridiculous. Like who spends that much? And then now it seems like a, actually like a kind of reasonable idea. Of oh like, yeah. Like a way to spend the day. <laughs> yeah what is the what is the the most trivial way that you've spent your uh, your time inside um well i've i've hit a i've hit the point where i'm i'm considering playing video games on twitch wow. there you go new, do you have do you have a new... game system <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm um I was playing I have a PS4 and I have a Oh, I think we lost you. But, but then like the PS4 apparently streams the Twitch really easily. I part of this is that it, it was a weird um evolution. Like I basically I spend on a normal day like like let's say like, you know, a, a month ago. Um, I spend most of my like work day, like in quotes, like working, right. uh, is like in the studio, like making, e I'll either be making something new or I'll be working on something for or with somebody else. Yep. And I've done, and, and lately it's been a lot of like really random things and random projects and random ideas that maybe I, I work on them for a couple of days and I go, oh, that was weird. And I just kind of, it just is nothing. And other things are like, actually things are eventually hopefully going to come out. Um, right now I was realizing, well, I can't get together with those artists and some of this stuff, like I, I kind of needed a new way to connect with fans. And so I was just going on Instagram live and doing basically just beat making. Um, I've been doing that almost every day. Yeah. So I'll just turn on the camera and just, I'll, I'll usually pick out a few sounds and then I'll just turn on the camera and just make like let the track run and and add and de add and subtract sounds and make a beat and the fans have really loved it i mean it's been a lot of fun so i was kind of started from there and then i started thinking like oh maybe i'll like that'll evolve into something else because it shuts off instagram shuts off in an hour yeah Twitch also does this forever. mean that everybody who's in that room is technically going to get like a co-producer credit because they were yeah. they're in the room <laughs> in the proverbial if, room if, yeah if if i if if i was like so that's the other that's the difference between the Instagram live version and the Twitch version is the Twitch version you actually are reading and 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 um, responding to like comments and ideas. The Instagram live version it's literally like a camera just just on me across the room and I can't literally get, like people could be just like lighting me up the entire time like dude Mike is such an idiot like, <laughs> you know, they could just they could just be totally making fun of me the for an hour and I would have no idea completely oblivious because I can't see the phone. Did you see, Mike, uh, a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, actually, Pablo Torre from ESPN was mm. uh, following this. There was the a Gal Gadot. Uh, yeah, model. <laughs> right. So Gal, G okay. Gal Gadot, uh, the actress, got all these other celebrities involved and they sang the Beatles. Imagine. Right. Or John Lennon. Yes. John Lennon's. But, Imagine you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so um, it got it got universally just like panned for everybody's, oh. you know, awful singing or just the idea. And there was a big New York Times article written by John Carmonica about it. And uh, so Pablo Torre said, please excuse me while I recruit a dozen celebrities to whisper sing in the end by Linkin Park into their cell phone cameras. <laughs> and yes. he did and got all these ESPN personalities. And it is amazing. Have you seen that? I have seen it. I didn't retweet it. I think it happened either the day before. Well, I, I, I became aware on it, aware of it on Chester's birthday. So I felt like that was a weird. I didn't want to retweet it. Sure. On a day that we were like celebrating him. And I felt so I just felt like that was we like bad taste in a sense. So I didn't do it. And then I forgot about yeah. I mean, that's like how fast these things go. Like the next day I had already forgotten about it. Yeah. So I didn't end up retweeting it. But I probably should have. I should have the next day because it was it was legitimately funny. Yes. yes. I mean, like I was I was dying laughing. Um, I want to know who do you think has the better Jay-Z collaboration, you guys or Jay Electronica? Oh God! How good is that Jay Electronica record? It's, it's really so good. good. Do you guys love it? I love it. Yes, I think yeah, it's, it's, it's still, really good. I and like I think I, I, I feel you remember. I mean, I don't remember. Uh, I don't know how you guys, um, how it was for you when you experienced, for example, like Wu Tang's first record, mm -hmm. or like like when when I hear an album that has a lot of deeper, a lot of levels to it. And like stuff that I go, oh man, this this person, it, it's not just like they didn't just like research stuff to put in raps. He's a complex person with a lot of like um, he he his his interests and his and his like culture and backstory cultural backstory are so deep, and it's a lot of stuff that I'm not familiar with. So like I've heard some of the Farrakhan stuff that he he is. I think he posted and what, but I'm not, I'm not super deep into that. I don't, I don't know it very well. And so when I was listening to the record, I was like, Oh man, this gives me that feeling of like, Oh, there's all these things to, to learn about. Yeah. To dive into. 
Yeah, I thought that was really. I think that's one thing that's really dope about it. Besides the fact that the, he, that I mean, it's just like, it's like the rap Olympics. It's like the gold medal. You know, it's like an NBA All Star team, even better. You yeah, know, it's for just sure. Like these guys like it, who are all just, just, just it killer. might be like an NBA Jam team, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's not even fair. It's not even real. Um, yeah, it's it's like yeah, it's that that other level. How did you and Jay connect in the first? Uh, Jay Z connect in the first place. Um, the short version is that he MTV had reached out to him and said, Hey, we're going to do this mashup thing. And the first big, really the first mashup that really got anyone's attention was the gray album. Yeah. Yeah. Which mashed up, mashed up his black album and the Beatles white album was yep. done by danger mouse. Yes. And so I, I, um, he, they asked him, you know, we want to do this mashup show. Who would you want to do it with? And he said, Lincoln park. So they reached out to, uh, reached out to us. And they didn't know that I grew up like years and years before. Well, I shouldn't say years and years, but m- uh, many years before, a few years before. Yeah, I had grown up um, mashing up songs like like so. Oh God, what year was this? Two thousand three ish. I don't know. Somewhere at two two thousand two two thousand three. I had um, let's say five or six years before I was learning how to sample and learning how to make tracks. And I was doing that mashing up songs that like didn't belong together. Right. It's like nine inch nails and Wu Tang and like Jay Z and like, uh, Jackson five and all these old like break beats and like rock sides. So, like, it'd be like literally like rage against the machine and smashing pumpkins and like, uh, Mike Geronimo or some random like New York, you know, by the way, I could get my Mike Geronimo is coming on the podcast. I think tomorrow. Shut the fuck up. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> how, how? What? Yeah. 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 How, no, we're longtime friends with him. So yeah. I'm, I'm, wait, we got to talk about how. How did you decide? Are you just friends with him? How did you decide to bring Mike Geronimo on the podcast? Yes. Yeah. I mean, like we've known him for probably a decade. A decade. Now. Yeah. And yeah. so I just texted him and I was like, "Hey, like we haven't had him on the 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 full form podcast yet, but we were just like, let's get him on this, you know? Yeah. And hear what he has to say." Do people know who he is? I mean, like, well, okay. I, no so one has gotten more excited, by the way, than with- you, A-Track, and Dave One from Chromio. Yeah. I loved his record. That that Mass IC record was so dope. <laughs> oh, my God. I lo- Dude, tell him I'm a fan. Absolutely, Absolutely will. will do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, And I literally had his, I had... So when I was doing, when I was learning the mash stuff up. This is a huge. We've gone on a huge like sidetrack here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, I so like first samplers and stuff. I bought. I bought like an S nine hundred, which is like a twelve bit sampler that you have to have, like a like a pro. Um, uh, what do you call it? A sequencer, a separate hardware sequencer to like make it play sounds. It's like so antiquated. Oh, and, for sure. But it was the. Th- it was the thing that like all it was the thing that like RZA used I think at one point Primo used it at one point it was like I knew those guys had used it and and I didn't have any money and I could get that like uh, relatively cheap so it was like my second piece or third piece of gear and I would I had these vinyl twelve inches with uh, that I come up on in like like the record store near my house. And I had all these acapellas. They always came with like the full version instrumental and acapella. So I had the acapellas of all these things on vinyl, and I would make my own beats and just play the vi- play the acapella vinyl over top of them and record that on a cassette. And I'd give that to friends, or I'd co- go over to parties and play people my newest you know mixes That's and whatever. That's dope. And so so just fast forwarding, you had asked about the Jay Z thing. Yeah. When they had sent me the note. Hey, you know, Jay wants to do this thing. MTV asked Jay and Jay wants to do it with you guys. My response back was three tracks. Like I just I just made three mashups and I sent them back. And that and his his text to us was, "Oh shit." <laughs> and I, we were like, "Okay, so we're off and running." Like we basically responded to them. They they thought we should get on stage and like jam out three mashups. But we were like, "Okay, here's what we want to do." We want to do an EP. We want to film it. Let's do it at a small venue, like a club, like the Whiskey or the Roxy. Yeah. And we're going to, we want it to be the, they wanted to do a show where a bunch of different artists did it. We were like, no, we want to be the only ones on the show. That's Just so do dope. Linkin Park Jay-Z for the whole episode. And they were like, okay, okay, okay. And the day we shot it, I remember the, the, the like director, producer guy from MTV was there. And he was like, oh man, we're so excited for this. This is going to be a new series on MTV. And in my head, I was like, oh, that's like fucking good luck with that. Yeah, because like it just feels all downhill from there. 
Like, who is it going to be? No, like, we, Koopa I mean, Stank? Even and... from the beginning, we were like, we were like, they have no idea what what it takes. I think Jay had a pretty good idea, and I had a very good idea of what it takes to like make a a mashup work. Yeah, right. It's it's not you gotta you gotta really be a fan of the things that you're mashing up. And I knew I I've always listened to Jay. I've listened to Jay's shit since the first record, so I knew all his stuff, and I was like a fan of the songs that I was mashing up. Um, I'm not like, you know, and I'm not like the president of the Jay-Z fan club, but I respect the guy. I love his music. You're not the and president, I, but those, you are a client. Those, <laughs> those songs in particular were like some of my favorite Jay-Z songs. I was like, great. This is like, this is like, you know, walk in the park. I, I love these songs. I'm mashing them up. It was a ton of fun. And we ended up, you know, uh, doing the thing and kind of like designing it in a way that, it, that they would have a hard time making another one. Wait, what was your first time at TRL like? So TRL was, for those listening who don't <laughs> know what that is, um, it was this pop show that Carson Daly was, it was the first time anyone had heard of We Carson already talked Daly. about we Mike Geronimo. Like, <laughs> How are we explaining <laughs> TRL? Well, okay, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But like TRL was, um, it was the biggest show in the world. Um it was uh, the thing that I was so impressed by. I, I, for the record, like I kind of, I had a real hate, love, hate relationship with that show. Like I generally hated it, mm -hmm. but the, but the thing that I really like respected about it was Carson Daly would talk in this, like very, like he would talk about this volume and the volume of the room was like 25, uh, jets flying you know, five inches from your ear like the, the you could hear the screaming in the room from outside the building and he was just talking at this level into his microphone like yeah we've got a, this new new artist coming up next britney spears and everyone's very excited blah 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 and everyone else is like ah! <laughs> and people are fainting and falling over and crying um and i just thought yeah so i thought like you know the presentation was so interesting cool and it was such a big show and and we got to go on it like in that kind of towards the the peak of that era yeah so um considering uh what you do these days um is is being you know in your studio inside uh working that strange well i mean i've all this has always been a part like this has always been a part of my process and my life like people forget sometimes that a song that becomes a really big song has to start. It usually has to start from like a human being in a room, you know, um, from in my case, like all of our biggest songs that I was, if, if I was the one who started it, it probably came from me in front of my, my piano or, or, um, my laptop, you know, making a beat or making a, playing some chords and singing some stuff. And then eventually, you know, that turns into the song that you hear. Um, so this is, you know, this is just part of the process. These, these days, um, there's been a, I, I, I went through a period, um, so like Chester passed away, um, almost, God, has it been almost three years now? Yeah. 2017. Um, yeah. So, so there were periods where like first, first thing I needed to do was like commune with the fans and I made a record called Post Traumatic, and I and I put that out just to really. It was just a diary to let fans know, like this is how I feel, this is what I'm going through. And then I went out on tour to like get in the in the like trenches with them and provide some kind of like connection and let them know I'm still here. And that was really important for me and for them, I think. Yeah. And then kind of wrap that up, feeling like okay, I I whether or not I, I feel like I could have done that probably for longer like theoretically but in my emotionally i couldn't do it any longer like i was like okay that was a lot and i need to move on now um and do something else so i started doing some stuff at home and i actually got this past year i got really i got kind of down on on doing that because i was making so many things that weren't seeing the light of day and i could put them out but it just felt like they all felt so it did, I, feel, I felt like why like why what's the bigger picture like what do they belong to and i and i realized just at the beginning of this year like like maybe a month or two ago 
that the issue for me, the reason I wasn't committing to a lot of that stuff or putting anything out was because it didn't feel ambitious enough. Um, so I took a step back and like now I'm, I'm, it's this weird line. Like some people wonder why some artists just, just make a song and put it out on SoundCloud that day. And then other artists sit in a, you know, they go into seclusion and like work on things for years. Yeah. And, and I, I belong, usually, I really feel more comfortable in that second group. Maybe it's partially cultural because I'm half Japanese and there's that, that, attention that's like craftsmanship yeah and attention to detail that's kind of baked in um but i'm finding yeah i'm finding a way to 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 balance it i don't i don't know what that's i mean you know i'm going on li- live on instagram so i'm trying to bridge the gap and have fun with it too. well yeah so like over the last 20 years it's uh like studio use has gone like in these two different directions and i think it's been like pinging back and forth where it was like okay everyone's going to go to you know sony or quad or you know uh, electric lady or any of the studios here in the city or go to la Mm -hmm. and you know any of the studios out there the plant and all that uh and then it was like oh people are going to put recording studios in their own homes and everyone's going to sort of like record whenever they want in the middle of the night or invite people over or just work themselves and you find a lot more people who are like uh you know, not only doing the front facing things, but also doing the production themselves. And then it's like, right. you see a little more of, of recent people are like, let's all commune again. And then it's like forced isolation considering the coronavirus. So are you in a place now where you are comfortable producing work that you would put out yourself with just yourself? Or is this something where it's like, you'll take a track and you'll email it to someone and hope that they can do something wherever they are and then return it to you and continue the collaboration that way? I mean, I, I've always been really open. Um, and, and like I have, I've, I've made a bunch of tracks with a bunch of different types of artists in the last year and year and change, I guess. Um, mostly i mean i'd say that like what would you call it like the median age would be like late 20s wow um so with that said I, I, part of the reason for that wasn't to like you know it wasn't a bunch of uh there's no like a-listers on that list there's nobody that you're like oh yeah that's like a huge artist and part of that is because i i, I don't feel like that's to me there's that's only that's a lose lose. Like if I if I get together with a huge artist and make a big track, they're gonna be like, "Oh, that's a huge artist." Of course, it's a big track. And if I don't make a track that like performs well, they're gonna be like, "Oh, well, well, so and so, you know, M- Mike worked on that so and so song and it didn't do well." Right. So I'd much rather I'd much rather take I'd much rather find a cool smaller artist and see what we can what I can learn from them and what they can learn from me. And to see if we can take their career to the next level. There's like a, also an element of like mentorship in that. Like I love working with a young artist who hasn't tried, um, you know, live guitars and live drums, or hasn't like oh they they always use like vs uh, like uh, like virtual pianos and stuff like that, and they haven't sat down and like recorded a proper piano before. It's things like that. Also, I find that there's like the other thing that is really interesting for for a young artist. And I feel like culturally, I don't know. Uh, I think it just became a thing because the because the technology is so easy. They really do have um, this tendency to make a song in a day or two and not do the craftsmanship part, like not come back to it and try and improve it. Right. And we've always talked about that, like like that's really getting a song over the one yard line. Like you can get a song to a really good place in a couple of days like and you'll know if you make a lot of songs and you'll know after a couple of days wow this one is a piece of shit and this <laughs> other one is like really dope like yeah. it's special and i don't even know where it came from it was like magic in the room and i listened to it and i just know but even that song that second song that's magic even that one most artists will be like it's magic i don't want to fuck it up and i just want to mix it and put it out asap mm. but they don't usually have the patience to say, okay, it's, if I assume, if I, if I look at this thing and I go, but what can I do to make it even better? What would I try? And that sometimes that's as simple as just re 
approaching some of the elements, like some of the instruments. Oh, maybe that snare is not the best snare. Maybe that background harmony is not the best harmony. Maybe these words in the verse, like I could just change a couple of words and it'd be really, really dope. Yeah, it'll be and, like the and one. They, most of them don't have that patience. Most young people don't have the patience or, or anybody in their ear just saying, it's really, really good, but could it be great? Yeah, yeah. Could well, it be fucking incredible? Who were some artists that were like mentors to you, like in the same way that you're a mentor to, to these young artists? I mean, on our, our first record, we worked with a producer named Don Gilmore. Don had a lot more experience than us at the time. He made a bunch of great like pop alternative rock records and taught um, he, he taught me how to he just taught me a lot of basics about engineering recording. Um, actually, it was like more like his engineers were teaching that stuff. But he was also a real stickler for going back to the drawing board on something and like and, and trying out a lot of options to push you like um, to different directions and stuff. Who who had he? Just, worked- yeah, it'd be like it'd be like that chorus is good, but you can beat it like your verse is great. Your chorus is good, but you can beat it and try some other options. And I, re- I appreciated that. That was really um, the first step and kind of the thing I was just talking about. But then I, I think we supercharged it with, you can imagine the difference between that and like working with Rick Rubin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Rick, Rick was like, he, he uh, said to me at one point, he said to me, I noticed that you guys write, this was early days. Like when we first started working with Rick, he was like, I noticed that you, Mike, you tend to make a track and really make that track sound great and you'll put vocals on it and you won't change the track. It's like, he's like, you write like a, like a rap producer. So you make a track and you put vocals on the track, but you don't usually change the track once the vocals start to arrive. Mm -hmm. He said, have you ever tried just sitting at an instrument and writing the same thing, but doing it at a piano, for example, where, oh, actually this vocal needs to go up. So my chords need to change. Oh, this vocal needs, wants the track to go faster i should play faster and it's so easy to just do it and you would make an entirely different kind of track that way did you record like, you at ever- shangri-la yeah yeah we did some recording at Sh- I, I i mean most of the stuff we did was at the what they call the houdini house do you know what that is i don't i don't so uh rick used to own he doesn't anymore um but he used to own this house on laurel canyon um, that belonged to, they call it the Houdini house, but my understanding is that the, it belonged to the, um, the like mistress of Houdini or something. Hmm. Like it was his girlfriend and he lived on the opposite side of Laurel Canyon. And there was a secret underground passageway, which by the way, we've seen like with it, that was real. It was, um, it went underneath the street and went under Laurel Canyon between the two homes. And then at some point, Rick or somebody else's, I don't know who did it, but at some point somebody um, put a, like a, like, like cemented it off, like sealed it off and put a bunch of bricks there. So you could go down into the basement of Shangri-La and you go down the little part of a tunnel and there'd be like a, um, a brick wall basically. But it was like a really, there was, I think it was, I don't remember if it was two or three stories, but there were so many rooms and you could record in all of them, but they, but it was, it was everything was super fishy like the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the all the sound in all the rooms was like recording in your house and the electrical would go out and people saw ghosts and shit like oh, it was cool. it was <laughs> great yeah, it was it's so fucking weird um well listen mike uh <laughs> this this phone call was not enough we definitely want to do uh a bunch more episodes with you if you're down <laughs> including a full like a waste of time episode whenever we make it out to los angeles whenever this is done yet um but uh as a patient person are you ready for what the next few weeks or months are looking like so I have two friends who are doctors and are really, really deep in the uh, medical response to the coronavirus here in L.A. So the guy, the, the woman is the director at Cedar sinai and the, her husband is like the, the like he manages like 10 of the biggest hospitals. He was like one of the guys he, like the, the mayor called him for three hours before he, the mayor decided what to do with L.A. Wow. Like he's you know, these guys, these people know they're really deep in it and they're heroes they're absolute yes, fucking heroes yes. we haven't seen them they we just facetimed with them last night to see how they're doing like they're f- good friends of ours and um 
I was, we were all joking around about like being cooped up in the house and going crazy. And I had said something about like, you know, something about when we, when this all clears out. And, um, Mariko, our, our friend Mariko was like, uh, like when, what, what are you guys braced for? Like how far I was, she's like, I've just been asking people cause nobody knows, but yeah. what are you braced for? And I was like, well, in my head, I was going to say, maybe we'll get a little more freedom at the end of April. But now that you're saying it to me that way, like, no, we don't know, do we? Like, it could be August. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, like the, the colleges and stuff, they've basically like canceled uh, graduation ceremonies and all this. And that's that's summer, right? So yeah. she's like, we could be looking at like who knows how long before we really get officially get our a lot of these like freedoms back and 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 that's is scary as hell but at the same time i also because i was talking to her i realized that they are it, it weighs heavily on their professional careers and on their conscience yeah um that people are gonna die right so yeah. the reason we do it isn't because i mean chances are you or i could if we got it we could be okay but there's so many people that would not. Yeah. yeah. And that's really the reason why like we we've got to try and stay safe and separated and all that. And at home. So, yeah. Yeah. And well, so like I'm if when I think about it that way, if I think about it for myself, I'm kind of like, well, fuck this. Like I want to go out. But if I think about like my parents, then I'm like I'm staying in. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Ab absolutely. Yeah. Same here and uh Listen, Mike, thank you for this uh, today, and uh, thanks for everything. We'll be checking in on you. Stay safe, and uh, love to you and yours. Great. This was great. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate you. All right. All right. It's called Guap Dad. Yo. Guap. What up? It is the Falcon. <laughs> Yo. Are you still soaring? Yeah. I'm soaring with a sore back. Yo, okay. So yesterday, heavy are the wing. Yes, uh, listen. Uh, yesterday we saw your your tweets saying that uh, life was good, but life could be better. Mm hmm. What exactly happened? Take us through that. Um, man, I I, I fucking woke up all of a sudden and just was having breathing problems. Literally, I went, I knew it was, something was wrong instantly. And at the same time, it, it, it's such a weird, like, juxtaposition to the night before because I was absolutely having the time of my life in the studio. No symptoms? No symptoms at all. I did seven songs. <laughs> and you, you went to bed and, and woke up, and what did you feel? Um... I felt like when I take a breath, I was trying to blow up a balloon in a in a in a in a shoebox that's too small to hold the balloon. That's how it feels when I take deep breaths. And are you still feeling that right now? Yeah. Does it like hurt to talk? Um, no. I just catch myself breathing a lot harder. To like get through sentences so if anything uh it hurts uh it hurts my ego that i can't talk as fast as i want to yeah yeah so you you were uh you were feeling these these chest uh this chest tightness you uh yeah. you 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 thought immediately oh this is a this is a problem and i should go to the emergency room yeah because i'm like no shit in the like best physical condition I ever been in in my life. We yeah. we're doing this fucking uh, fitness challenge. We're forty days in. I'm eating completely healthy. I don't eat fast food, soda, any of that shit. And I've even gained eighteen pounds of muscle. Like I'm fucking. You're yoked out better here. than I ever been. Yeah. Yeah, I'm buff block. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Stone Cold Steve Flossing. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, uh, I, I instantly knew something was wrong, and I yell and scream for a living, right? Literally, for right. Thirty minutes. <laughs> so I knew it was an instant thing. I kind of waited for a second just to make sure I wasn't like, uh, I, I wasn't tripping. Uh, 
Hey, you know, I'd be drunk as hell in the studio, so I'm like, mm. but being a budding, a budding alcoholic as well, <laughs> I've never felt that type of shit on a hangover day. So uh, I, I was like, yeah, I need to go to the hospital. So who did you, who did you hit to take you there? I just walked upstairs. My whole team lived with me. Right. Fortunately for business, unfortunately for health. <laughs> yeah, is anybody My else? My whole team. Is, is anybody else like feeling it uh, the way you are? No, nobody is. It's just me. So you you get a, you get a ride to the emergency room. Yeah, and they got it all quarantined off and hello, you know what I'm saying, super cool. And then they got a tent outside that say uh, COVID nineteen screening. So I tell them that's why I'm here. And then they walk me over there. All the chairs are hella separated and shit. It's, it actually looked kind of cool. They had cool looking chairs out there. <laughs> and I was I was like, damn, what was the chair budget for this hospital? Because <laughs> these seem pretty expensive for just health. Anyway, and then they asked if I'm a Kais member. I'm not, but I got insurance. I got some good ass insurance. And that's what I told them. And she was like, oh, we're just going to take you in there to see a doctor because this is for uh, members. I'm like... For sure, bitch. <laughs> Take me in there. Then. So she took me in there, and um, they just keep asking me if I'm a member. I keep telling them no. And once I finally got to see a doctor, I told him uh, all my symptoms and shit. And like, long story short, bro, him and like the 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 lady who came in to do my EKG after the doctor left. Cause he just wrote my thing up. I was like, "Yeah, you can go." The lady and, and her Filipino partner was basically just like, "Look, bro, with your history, it seems like you should be in good health. The only breathing thing really out there is COVID and pneumonia via COVID, or just pneumonia itself. It's one of those, and we don't. They're not testing for." for the shit directly and basically he was like we not finna waste uh of one of our fucking breathing with things on you when it's hella old people out there pretty much is what they said so i was like all right and they said to come back home if i if i get a high fever or like it gets to it gets too crazy well do you breathing. have like a thermometer um yeah i do and have you been like testing yourself regularly, or like feeling like feverish, I'm, or? I'm pretty aware. I'm 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 pretty aware. Like I'm super self aware. I'm because I only get sick once every two years. Really, I don't I don't really get sick like that ever. Like, Is this ever, the second really. year or the first year? <laughs> uh, shit, I can't tell you. <laughs> Feels like I, a really bad system. I, yeah. <laughs> Are you oh. are you are you like hydrating like just like times ten right now? Yeah, Thundercat calls me like every two hours and reminds me to drink hella water. <laughs> wait, wait, you have a good system. Even, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Are have you been afraid that any, at any point this entire time? No. That's good. Yeah, I'm. Like, that's what people, when I was tweeting about it, just like, you know, Twitter's kind of like my diary, detrimentally so. But when I was um tweeting about it, everybody was like, you sure it's not anxiety? And I'm like, I have never been anxious about anything in my whole fucking life. I don't have, I never experienced, I don't even know what it feels like to experience anxiety to the point where your um your breathing is fucked up. So I was like, what? Yeah, this nah, isn't like man. a panic attack. This is like you're you're. Yeah, you're... I just I just can't breathe. That's all it is. It's just like I'm trying, and, and I feel like because I know what it is to a certain extent that it's kind. Uh, I'm kind of calm with it. It's just like I'm sitting it out. Yeah, I mean, you're also not experiencing like life threatening symptoms. Just to like be clear, you're just yeah. having trouble breathing and uh, and like something that you feel like you can beat. Exactly. Yeah. So are the people around you, your team, your relatives, uh, friends, are they concerned? Yeah, some of the uh, more or less in informed family members are obviously, like, freaking out. Uh, 
my mom was gonna be a mama, you know. Yeah. Uh, but is it wrong that we were concerned school? when we saw your tweets? No, we friends. I know. I hit y'all up. If y'all said some shit. <laughs> So yeah. so okay, you you go to the emergency room. They send you home. Do they give mm-hmm. you any like prescription? Any like uh, instruction? Man, the niggas ain't give me shit. They they don't have no inhalers, and uh, it, like that's what I'm telling you. They just really saving this shit for the niggas who probably gonna die or probably who are at risk the most to death, and they sending everybody else home. Did they give you a chair? No, I wanted to take one of them motherfuckers though, because they had them stacked up. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't, but my uh, Benji pulled up to come give me his girlfriend car ain't that big, so. But I was thinking about this one of them motherfuckers. I was even walking around with a mask or something like something was finna get stole from this damn hospital. They just didn't have nothing for me to get. Has has anything changed over the last day health wise? Have you gotten any better? Has it gotten any worse? Um, I I feel exactly the same as yesterday. I still am having breathing problems. Um, and my back is kind of you know when you when you about to get sick and your body start aching. Yeah, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with it now with my back. Are you have you gotten anything like have you gotten like Tylenol? Have you gotten Mucinex? Uh, I was told by a good doctor friend of mine that Mucinex is a placebo, so I don't take Mucinex. But I uh I got some Tylenol in here, some whatever the painkiller that starts with the A. That's not ibuprofen. I said acetaminophen. Acetaminophen. Yeah. 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 Do you do you in that moment, or I guess the plenty of moments when you went to the hospital and you're sitting there and all you could do is wait? Are you thinking about like? all the the little things that have you know maybe yeah maybe you touch somebody's hand maybe yeah. you touch the surface like do you are you like writing a list of your enemies <laughs> no uh i just uh you're I at peace just, with it only ra- only radical things happen to me nothing normal ever happens in my life only radical things happen to me and also they they named uh they named the disease after a woman, and I'm I'm a fucking pussy magnet, so I already knew she. Was oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, COVID is a beautiful name. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. So so today you you woke up once again. Now you're a little more used to it. What has your? I, and I guess this is like uh, yeah, we're just getting you when you're waking up. Yeah, like 20 minutes in. Uh, what is the rest of your day gonna look like? Uh, I'm finna sit here. I downloaded a new video game on the Switch called Dauntless. I'm waiting on my engineer to set up a home recording studio because I still got verses I want to do, and while I can still do them, they finna get done. You're gonna you're gonna keep rapping. Yeah, I'm finna. I'm still doing the Rona rap series. I Me and Smino finna. He finna pick a beat. I think he wants to do the Fresh Fresh Bel Air theme song fire so, that's dope by the way we've had like friends at labels who've been hitting us up being like yo you have to connect us to uh to guap dad yeah what guap dad's doing because, is like, pretty these raps are they're it that's tight so we're trying to get you a yeah, bag I mean, well, shit hell yeah yeah um also uh alex Tumay uh is experiencing similar symptoms and so i'm trying to connect you guys to uh to at least either talk about what's going on or to uh, to do some work. I, I know you got an engineer already, but like Alex is a is a good engineer as well. Alex tight. He might be better than uh, James Delgado's doing on my mix right now. I'm pretty sure he's way better than James Delgado. That's nice. Wait, experience. does is James does listen James listen? Yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to Guap Dad. He's very sick. <laughs> No, I'm James. Know what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> James, is, James is tight as fuck, and I'm, I'm I'm sticking with James. But I'm saying it'll be tight to get some sessions to Alex. Fuck with him. Let James soak up some game and like learn. We're all about learning from niggas that's better than us at stuff. 
So James know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, as 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 you know, and some people knew out there, we were going to go down to South by Southwest. We were going to do a live podcast with you down there, and only yeah. the only thing that could shut it down was the coronavirus, COVID nineteen. Um, do you have any words for what stopped what would have been an amazing live event? Oh man, my South by Southwest whole week was going to be so crazy. Because, so originally, if, if you listen to the last two songs I dropped, they're super hype, bass heavy, all up-tempo, all like like rage songs, because I, I was releasing them to have more shit to perform on tour. Yeah. Um. So, the, all five songs on the first tape that I was gonna like do a, a, just a compilation of I was just dropping the songs individually it's called Plat- the Platinum Falcon tape mm. and I was uh, they were all just tour songs so I got three I had three more songs left and I was gonna promo them at all at South by Southwest like every two days Guap Dad would be doing something like we found one of those trains that, that you could ride in the middle of the mall <laughs> I was gonna be a conductor and ride the train <laughs> around like the street because I got a song called "Little Scammer That Could." Oh my with god! With me and Denzel. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I send it to y'all. And um, I got another one, man. I, we got like planters to like the to peanuts? sponsor, and I was gonna. Yeah. Are you Mister Peanuts? No, because they were doing the baby nut thing. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was gonna. I was gonna walk around with an animatronic baby nut, <laughs> put a do rag on him, and shit. Um, for for anybody who uh, missed the Grammy red carpet, uh, you are listening to the winner of that uh, event. Guap Dad yes. came out there, yeah, best dressed with the fucking killer do rag. With the with the yeah iridescent flow. Well, actually, it's a train of a different kind. You know that that train just like fucking went on forever. Yeah, yeah. What was the thinking behind that? And uh, did did everything meet your expectations? Completely. It was crazy too because um, I mean, well, y- y'all know me. Yeah. I, either I plan it or it just happens. But that was definitely a planned one because I've just always wanted to. A do rag that long, like on some <laughs> elegant shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have done full body do rags before, but nobody's done it on like a red carpet. Like you, I, I completely found a way to dress up a do rag. <laughs> <laughs> if I was an actual king, like niggas would be like, "Wow." Wait, what do you mean an actual king? You are an actual. That's king. right. That's yeah. right. I, I'm talking about with with staking the land and government. Oh, oh, oh! No, I feel like even still. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I dress you as like you know my my brother my king that's right yeah Sir Guap mm-hmm. Dad yeah mm-hmm. as you should yeah, yeah. so so you pull um, up you pull up on that red carpet do they know that you oh, are look y'all go love this so I, because Kobe died they changed all the stickers in the access because all these other all these crazy people who weren't coming to the Grammys were now coming they had to rearrange seating they had to change the whole program. Yes. And my sticker was no longer allowed access to the press side of the carpet. Because it's two sides. It's an A and the B side. The uh, the B side is what all the press where everybody's in line. And the A, you literally walk straight down. You take a picture in the press pit with all the, um, which is all the Getty Images guys. Right. And then uh, say hi to the fucking... Uh, make a wish foundation children yes. and then you go in but you don't get to talk to any press and it's no and niggas was gonna see me uh-uh. <laughs> I wasn't having it <laughs> I wasn't having it at all and y'all can't tell but I had a bottle of Dom Perignon in my jacket too I did I did not no, see that <laughs> yeah and there was no way there was no way I was finna leave it cause you could only take it on the press side as a prop so I worked with my um my uh, my publicist Breon and we stole somebody else's ticket. <laughs> Shouts, to Shouts to Breon. Shouts to Breon. 
Yeah, she went to ask some random person on the carpet, like, yo, can I see your ticket real quick? And, uh, <laughs> and we went around, came to the front, and I walked the whole thing. Literally, once people were seeing the do-rag, they just had to stop me. Did anybody step on the do-rag by accident? Good question. No, but I allowed my friends to step on it on purpose. <laughs> There's an amazing picture of us smoking, getting high uh, in the bathroom at the Grammys, saying "R.I.P. Kobe." Yeah, and uh, and I let I let my niggas walk on the do rag like it was, <laughs> was the red carpet. <laughs> um, besides Samino uh, and Denzel, who do you have unreleased music with? Um. I got a crazy song with Ty Dolla Sign. Ooh, wow. Ooh, it's some, it's some sick. Um, but shit, Moshi with Buddy. Yeah. Uh, Moshi with Wale. Yeah. yeah. I like your guys' friendship. Yeah, the ramen, yeah, the ramen Wale. connection. Love yeah. that. When did you guys like yeah. first link up? Um, that nigga was DMing me and was just like, "Yo, man, you at the studio? Like, I, I mean, I'm at the studio. Like, you should pull up." I fuck with you. I'm like, all right. I didn't know what to think. I pulled up on this nigga in the studio, and we. Every time I pull up on a rapper for the first time there in the studio, we make a song that comes out later. But we, um, we made that song that that Young Chris just dropped. Me, him, and Young Chris from the Young Guns. Yeah, hell yeah, that's our guy. Yep. Yeah, um. So that was how that came about. Then we would like meet up, get ramen a few times. Um, get ramen some more times and like be in the studio some more times. Guap, when you went down to the Dreamville sessions, uh, were you were you going in there with the idea that you would, you know, get on every single song that you would bring your energy to it that you would like add something that no one else could, or were you like, let me feel it out and see how it goes? I wasn't feeling shit out. I went down there to destroy and dog niggas. Mission accomplished. That was my goal. And I, I thought my goal was being thrown off because this nigga buddy. <laughs> so as soon as I got, so as soon as I got the invite, right, I hit buddy, and he was like, "You calling me about the Dreamville shit?" I'm like, "Yeah." He was like, "They invited me too. You going?" I'm like, "Yeah." When you leaving? He was like, "I finna leave tomorrow." I'm like, "Damn, I gotta get there Saturday because I got a show in Arizona. I'm in Arizona, but, but the show tomorrow." He was like, "All right, ain't no thing." I'm like, bro, I, if I, if it's what they telling me it is, we got to go down there and really dog shit, like dog shit, like bully. And he was like, I don't know, man. I'm kind of high right now. <laughs> I think I think I'm going to just go uh, like I'm going to fly with some shrooms and just make music with the homies that I that I already know, you know. And I was like, I mean, shit, if that's the vibe, I, I don't know the vibe. Maybe I'm tripping. I get there, uh, all I hear is, sub go out, and his buddy running from one studio to another <laughs> building. And I'm like, bro, what? So I find, I like sign in and shit. And then I, um, I'm i talking to this nigga buddy, and he like, yeah, bro, I'm like 12 songs in today. I did I did like five songs yesterday, but you know, <laughs> niggas was just warming up. <laughs> and I was like, you fucking bitch ass nigga, all right. And, and I got straight to it. I ended up doing 38 songs. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. What kind of connection did you have with, like, uh, some of the people you didn't expect to be there, like Chris Bosch? Did you meet Chris Bosch? Yeah, I did. Um, I, he just shook my hand. That was really it. That's how you got, got coronavirus. Weird... <laughs> yep. Just been sitting there for, <laughs> for a year and a half <laughs> waiting on my stupid ass. <laughs> who, else, who else was... Oh, Luda came. Did you meet Ludacris? I didn't meet Ludacris. Me and Buddy had a crazy interaction with Swiss Beats. Really? He came to like specifically work on some shit with Cole because Cole was also recording his album in like the back room yep. and just was chilling. And uh, this nigga came on specifically to work on some shit with Cole. Dude, we caught him in a live room. He was like, Swiss Beats in a live room. Let's go take the mic from him and freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> so I took a shot out of a handle with Jameson, which was more like a triple shot. We ran over to the live room. Oh, my God. Swiss Beats was playing the beat and doing a hook to something. Everybody just watching them. And me and Buddy just walk up and start rapping next to a back Yo. to back. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what did, what did he think? Somewhere. So 
but I think M- M- Masego might have it, but somewhere somebody has that recording because then Cousin Stiz came up, Kaj came up, and, and, and Swiss just kept doing the hook in between our stuff. I love we that. We were literally just freestyling. That's fucking dope. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was crazy. That is fire. So, uh, all right. So you're you're feeling the same right now. Are you mm-hmm. are you doing anything to to get yourself better physically? I mean, does anybody have any clue that they've like passed along to you to you know work yourself back into fighting shape? I don't know. I, I'm like gonna do some push ups and shit again. And Did someone tag you on it. Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> the challenges, yeah. Uh, people yeah people that's what I'm saying the night before people was tagging me in that shit I wasn't even doing normal push ups I was doing push up like the jump clappy ones oh like, shit push ups I was fucking doing god damn yeah. I think those are called jumping jacks no 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 the ones where you push up and then clap oh, and then got go it, back got it, got down it. Yeah. yeah so I was like what the fuck how did this even happen but I'm just I'll probably just do a, a slight workout until I feel like um, I can't anymore just to maybe, like, get the sweat out. Yeah. Take a hot-ass shower. Uh, Definitely take the hot-ass shower, yeah. And just, to, like, take it easy till it's time to rap. Take a hot-ass shower and then get some hot sh- a- hot shower ass. It's <laughs> a good joke. Bro, I wish. <laughs> yeah. I wish, but I ain't trying to infect none of these hoes. No, no I'm saying, like, you know, like, in two weeks. Like, let that be the motivation. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Well, Guap, uh, we love you. You know that. Uh, I hope that uh, you take it easy to the point that you can, that you recuperate, that you get well, because we need you out here healthy and strong and everything. And uh, we'll be checking in on you. Be well. And uh, hope all your team is doing well, too. All right. Thank you. Love y'all. All All right. Love you. Now, Jeff, let's see if we can get on the phone with Travis Thompson. Yo, what's going on, dude? Travis, what's what happening? Up? What's up, man? How y'all doing? Uh, we're doing all right. How are you doing? You are you are as Seattle as it comes. How is and, your yes. how is your city doing? Uh, shit, it's kind of not good at all, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a second, it was like the epicenters, and it still kind of is. So it's like, but they haven't put shelter in place like technically like officially but people are kind of already acting like that so so uh when was the first time that you really felt like oh this is bigger than maybe i even anticipated it was it was like it was the day that they suspended the nba and it was like probably like a couple hours before that we were all like i was with all the homies i was like oh shit this is because i was the one being like man it's not that bad like for the most part we're gonna be good it's not that and then i the switch kind of just flipped and i was now i'm the germaphobe homie who's like get the fuck out of here get away from me yeah are you do you live by yourself (laughs) do you live with roommates like what who do you live with No, i live with uh my girl and my sister so uh were you or them like on top of like groceries and on top of like all the lysol stuff and your amazon orders were you like like shit we we had like a good stock of cleaning supplies here but we're starting to run low on sanitizer, so it's kind of like, damn, we're it's it's about to get real here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have a cousin uh, up in Seattle, and she uh, has a young son, and and uh, she was talking about how he has uh, a, a certain reaction to the detergent that she and uh, her husband use, right, for their clothes, oh, and so to get him his specific detergent they had to go out and found like the last bottle in the city and even like looking for toilet paper you have rationing going on where there's like police officers standing there making sure that everyone just gets like one case or yeah no yeah like my my family are in like those facebook neighborhood pages and it's like it's people are like listing times to go to the grocery store like you got to be up at like 6 7 a.m if you want to get toilet paper right now yeah and so uh just on a on a on a personal level, because we'll get to the professional stuff too, because you were supposed to be out on tour right now. Yeah. But on a, on a personal level, how have, how has your life changed on a day to day basis? I mean, it's not like I was. Uh, I don't know. It's not like life changed a lot. For the most part, I go to the studio. I go to 
I'm at the apartment that I live in or I am at like a bar with the homies after the studio. You know what I mean? Right. It's it's it was a pretty lax, not many people around me. And I'm always I was already a germaphobe, so it's not like much changed, but it's the idea that I can't and it's like but at the same time I would I would go I was going to concerts all the time, you know what I mean? It's like my hometown, I go to shows all the time, so shit is different. You know what I mean? But are you like washing your hands like five more times a day or oh, like no, nah, other nah, I was already a germaphobe, man. Like <laughs> like all the homies are, have already been like, Oh, we're we're moving like Travis, Kelly, we're moving <laughs> Travis. You know what I mean? Like, because I was already kind of paranoid about it because I get I thought I used to think I get sick. I don't know. I haven't gotten sick though. I feel good. That's real good. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. what what song do you sing in your head when you wash your hands? I don't really. I Whack. maybe Whack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't are, know. Yo, yeah, are you even washing all, your hands, getting, bro? Are we all just getting like sixteens off or like uh, hooks off? Travis just yeah, Travis just I do counts. it for I do it for game amounts of time, so I do three hundred <laughs> bars. <laughs> Shit, you're just, <laughs> just, just rubbing my hands every raw time, every time you wash your hands. Yeah, uh, that's kind of funny. No, nah, I don't know. I just, yeah, I don't know. I just be washing my hands, man. Are you are you watching things on TV? Like, what what is your day structured like now? Oh, dude, I've been watching. We, me and my girl ran through every end of the world and pandemic movie. I think made probably. Do you feel more or more or less prepared because of it? I feel more prepared, and but way less hopeful you know what i yeah, mean yeah yeah <laughs> like i'm just i don't know even even like the end of the world movies i think have a pretty optimistic outlook on the intentions and or like who people are you know what i mean yeah like it doesn't just like I'm fade like, to black oh, and it's like and then the, like, yeah. then the world ended are gonna get to the airport for their pjs like no <laughs> who row bags are gonna take the planes and then try to get out and crash you know what i'm saying like shit is gonna be hectic at the end of the day you know what i mean yeah yeah, I mean, so are you are you cooking all your meals? Is your girl cooking meals? Like, how is this working uh, out? Shit, my girl is cooking a lot of meals. I'm doing a lot of cleaning and sweeping and trying to. You are the germaphobe. Yeah. Seem productive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, because she's making these fire ass meals, and I'm like, damn, I gotta contribute somehow. So I'm doing <laughs> a lot of counter wiping, a lot of life sawing, a lot of vacuuming. Do you feel the, <laughs> Do you feel the need to wake up earlier to to be more productive, considering that you're home all day? Yeah. Are you like? Getting tagged in uh in push up challenges and you're just like let's go. Nah hell no, my friends know better than tag me in push up <laughs> challenges. It's not happening. <laughs> I'll be getting tagged in a lot of shot challenges, which is a little more. Finished. You're, yeah, your but, speed, yeah, your yeah. speed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Not. Are yeah. there are there any projects that that you like outside of music? Because we'll, again, we'll get to the professional stuff in a second. Uh, well, what we're really. I don't want anyone to steal my sauce, but I really want to do like a like a late night with Travis Thompson variety show. That'd be like dope. a live thing that people tap into and be like, it'd be like a thing you pay to like ten bucks to watch one time. And I do like, I want to like have Jake One come through and make a beat on the spot, and I like rap on the spot, and then we have like a guest or something on why I don't know something like that. Yo, so wait, so this would be this would be that in person. Right uh, I think, I mean, yeah, maybe yeah, we'll check his temp at the door, have him slide. He don't live too far. <laughs> Yo, get, get Benner on the phone. <laughs> no, that's literally, literally, like, that's who, ben, Benner's going to take credit for the idea. For oh. <laughs> Typical Benner. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, like we were yeah. saying, you were supposed He's to be He's a variety hour and I, I put the sauce on it. Yeah. You were, you were supposed to be out on the road at this point. I was, I was supposed to be out around the whole country. We're like leaving literally I would have been at the airport today. What were the discussions like when all the venues or all the promoters or uh, all the cities were sort of like, guys, were a little nervous about this? Luckily, I was the opener. I was the direct support on a tour. So I heard everything through uh, like a middle person. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. through other – through because I was opening for George Watsky on his tour. Yes. So I was – all the info we got was from his agent and him directly. So it's like, and but George is before he any a like agent would email us. He's the kind of guy who just calls you and be like, "Hey man, so I'm pretty sure you know what's going on, but I want to like talk about it and see how you feel." So it's like throughout the whole process, it was like, "Yeah, we're gonna keep an eye on this." Oh shit, it's getting pretty bad. It doesn't look good. We're gonna <laughs> wait two days. Oh, we're not gonna wait two days. It's done. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. That's kind of how it went. Does it suck to have to cancel everything for low ticket sales? You say that again? <laughs> <laughs> say that again? I said that everything was canceled due to low ticket sales. Now you have to run with that. Oh, shit. Yeah, no. Nah, honestly. Fuck. <laughs> nah. 
you know, what's surprising is it was my first time going out to like a lot of these cities and like i actually made like a splash i, I like we're super like oh what did it what did it do like how many people were on the link like we actually made a little splash i was kind of proud of myself this time don't come for me dog no <laughs> <laughs> no playing. i think it's i think it's super dope too it's a it's a you know it was a, a a wonderful time. You put your your first album out. You're yeah. you know getting a great. I was re- hella excited. Yeah, man. yeah. And to go out on the road. But it is what it is. It's not. It's, it's bigger than this bigger issue. Than no, this for big sure. Yeah. For sure. So now, when you create music, is your headspace like just coronavirus? Like, is it? Is it? Dude, it's been it's been kind of hard to like, like I'm getting little sixteens off, but like it's been probably like a week since I've like really i really feel like i've made something solid because every time i sit down to do something i kind of feel like a dickhead i'm like what is it even no no, i get it it. we've 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 talked about that with other people too it's like it's but well wait what is your what is your writing process normally like do you do you go off by yourself are you is it more of a social thing like what it's it's either i'm on the way to the studio and i play a bunch of beats in the car and then i get to the studio and i let them play or i'm just at the crib letting beats play and like i'll I'll like stand up. I have to like stand up and walk around a room when I write. Yeah. So it's like, like so you're I'm about like, to fight. <laughs> yeah. No, literally, it's like I'm like gearing up. I'll like, I'll even grab them like a fake microphone, like a dickhead, and like perf- like come up with hook ideas. You know, for some reason it helps. But no, that's for how, sure. I bet. I, I mean, done. I mean, remember when um when Kanye did graduation? He was like, I want to hear all these songs like in an arena. A, a stadium, so like you have yeah. to sort of like imagine like how it's going to be. I imagine that that's what you're doing yeah. as well. He heard. He just like brought bounces to an arena just to hear him no he was like he was like this is this is the sound i'm looking for and so i need to make it and create it for that yeah um that's crazy so so with that the case are you uh willing to give yourself more time and not sort of push yourself into just creating for creating sake yeah no honestly i was already kind of in the headspace of giving myself a little bit more time because like i've i've before this whole thing happened i was super like locked in that's why life didn't change much i was super locked in like on whatever the next thing is like mm-hmm. i know i'm working on an album but i don't have like a, a concept for necessarily yet or a narrative that i'm trying to drive home so right now i'm just making hella music so i never i've never had more music but at the same time i was in a space of like i'm gonna chill for a second and really kind of evolve and i want to come back with something that's when i do because i it's only been like what six months or something since i released my last album right, so at the yeah. same time it's like I'm making, I feel like I have songs that are on the cusp of something new, but there's also a bunch of songs that sound like throwaways from the last one. So it's like, I need to give myself time to, uh, I don't know, grow. Yeah. Uh, Gain some perspective and I'm moving in a little bit and like, I'm, I don't know, I've learned a lot. So I'm trying to like tap into what this newfound, I don't know, growth is. If you, well, how far away are you going to move? Uh, just down to LA, like every, every (laughs) kid does, you know? (laughs) <laughs> Yo, you know what I was thinking about, like, along with, you know, the the whole basically country shutting down and everyone staying in place, which, which really, like, honestly, is the best thing for this, you know, to combat it and all that. But people who have, uh, you know, made the commitment to move in the middle of all of this or like bought an apartment yeah, and oh have my, to, no, like, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, like, I've a couple like my friends, fam, I've been seeing people get married in backyards, like whole weddings have been shifted yeah people are getting emails saying their graduation is going to be like online now man like, yeah shit is different this i like asked my dad if like he went through anything like this and he was like nah this is this is different even for me and this dude's like 60 yeah well i keep i keep thinking about like how in world war Two london was getting like bombed on like and how how life yeah. just like changed and and i mean like it, ha- it happens like all the time and like you know, different, uh, less developed countries where it's just like something will happen and just like wipe out everything like a war or like a, a weather event or whatever. And so it's just like, that's, that's what this is. Like it, it's a war that we're yeah. going through. It is and, a war. Like, a yeah. war yeah. hasn't happened on, on American shores since like nine 11. And before that never, and but also, so, but, but yeah. it, 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 it's something that's just like, is this the toughest thing that we have to go through to just sit at home, like not even get bombed on? Like we're not even like no, for real, like, literally not, just stay in place. Yeah, like we don't have to like go downstairs. We have all the amenities of just like Amazon and video games and like hang time yeah. and whatever else. Like it's like sure, it's it's not the worst thing ever for 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 yeah. us, for us, right? Yeah, I think yeah, that no, for us, yeah, for the for the. I think there's a few things. One is 
clearly like the doctors on the front lines are heroes right yeah. but we we cannot Trash. like uh put up our noses at the people who are making deliveries yep the cashiers or the cashiers yeah, yeah. people who that's are working I, grocery oh my stores God. that's when i was at the grocery store that's what i was thinking about the whole time i was like this cashier is taking dirty debit cards and cash all day long yeah like yeah. literally risking you know their lives and it's it's yeah that is. and so so there is that i think there is this fear too because i i know it from myself where it's like you can't you can't see it. It's not a storm, you right. know, that you can watch the yeah. the satellite images of, or it's not it's, uh, like a zombie it's not that's walking outside. Real in a lot of people's like everyday lives yet, so yep. it's like it's hard for people to see it. And I, I do, I do have to say, like Jeff, Jeff was going through YouTube videos on our Apple TV, as I do. Yeah, you know, it's my ye- thing. Yesterday, <laughs> and uh, uh, you were playing a video uh, from a doctor who works for the CDC, who was like answering questions that were. Uh, addressed to him on Twitter and Mm -hmm. he said a lot of of factual stuff in there that I hadn't considered like you know the virus doesn't necessarily live on clothes you know or that it's it's you know and there's a lot of misinformation out there but there's also a lot of Mm -hmm. questions that none of us know the answers to and it is helpful to Mm -hmm. watch a video like that every once Mm -hmm. in a while so I guess I'm a hero for playing it you are a hero Jeff yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) basically basically are you nah, I'm, I'm definitely the one in the group chat sending all like the the now this videos i'd be seeing and stuff to, but to, like trying to convince the homies to listen but you're not the one who's going on reddit and finding like the really crazy thing are you conspiracy theory travis don't be here. that I guy up, i looked up coronavirus on reddit and i saw people bleaching their email i mean bleaching their mails and i uh, bleaching their mail and i was like nah it's a wrap Y'all no what <laughs> that's yeah, insane people out there talking about bleaching their mail and i'm like come on bro i mean it's one way to get rid of your bail uh your bills <laughs> <laughs> my bail my yeah, yeah. Why, going to jail. That wife's so clean. Yeah. yeah uh are you are you mentally prepared for how long this could be uh no simply because i i definitely love being you know i'm outside yeah i definitely <laughs> i definitely love being out and about with people so it's like i don't know it's are you taking it day by day then yeah i guess so i you know we're all taking it day by day man that's all, that's all you can do i'm just smoking a bunch trying to get good at call of duty holy fuck I'm, people are so good at this game how do you trust then, uh your 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 weed getting to you oh that's a good question oh i got it i got i got a dealer and he He's a it, our whole exchange has changed up and we didn't even have to talk about it. It was like this <laughs> unspoken this we're moving different now. Yeah. Does he throw like bag. a trash bag at your door? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, he'll he'll get he'll get in the back of the car and just be like, Yeah, this coronavirus shit is crazy and I'm like, Yeah, you're right. He'll hand me a bag like like with like gloves on. Yeah. And then hop out of the car, I cash app him and that's how that moves. Yeah. Wait, isn't it legal up there? It's legal up here, but also at the same time, that's a, that's the thing people don't understand about like the. I guess I'm a bougie weed smoker because there's the legalizing it just made a bunch of people who know how to market weed be able to sell weed legally, and there's a lot of bad weed. In I was going to say, yeah, readily available. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean to like shit on like <laughs> Seattle's weed at all. Seattle has amazing weed. Yeah, but like, and all, and also like bad weed here is like great weed i've been on tour like you know bad yeah. weed is still good. so like but i but there's just so much bad weed in the store and and the good weed is like super expensive it's like 50 dollar ace so it's like you can find a dealer who's getting i'm making it hot but yeah <laughs> uh travis are you a, are you a coffee in the morning guy nah no nah, i'm not God, caffeine doesn't really do it for me like that wow i don't, I don't yeah i don't know i'm i I would like it if I got on it, and that's why I never got on it. I <laughs> think. All right, that's fair. Are you a cocaine you know in the like morning sort of guy? <laughs> Say that again. Are you a cocaine in the morning sort of guy? Nah, nah, <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm not a cocaine guy. I I did Adderall for a little bit, and I liked it, so I was like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> um. Well, listen, Travis. Uh, stay safe up there. Uh, nah, hell yeah, y'all stay healthy out there, man. Yeah, man, real. stay home. I, you, listen, you know we both live in in hot spot cities, and uh, we yeah, got to we got to do our best not to keep this going. You know. Nah, dead ass. I'm I'm a, I'm on the same wave, man. I'm trying yeah. to keep my people's healthy. Hopefully, y'all are keeping y'all's people's healthy. Absolutely, and yo, be creative. Like, do that show, make it happen, and uh, yeah, man, and enjoy that's, yourself. That's I'm getting in the headspace. I've been dabbing a little bit more. 
here and there. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Right on. All right. We'll make sure to talk to you soon. All right. Hell yeah, man. Hit me up. All right. Take care. Appreciate y'all. All right. Yep. You too. Bye. Bye. Shout out to Travis Thompson. Shout out to Guap Dad 4000 and shout out to Mike Shinoda. Shout out to all of you guys out there. Be healthy. Be safe. Be creative. Stay your ass home. Don't listen to what Trump is saying and get out there and go back to work. This is foolishness. Guys, be safe. Yep. Just stay, stay healthy. Inside. Wear something that makes you happy. Yeah. Smell good. Make buy your bed every day. Buy a video game console. It changes lives. The Sega thing is like 60 bucks. <laughs> As always, guys, not for real, for real. Sure, sure. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Right.